Yeah. Nice. Right. Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm calling to order the. <clears throat> okay. Calling to order the January 30th, 2024 meeting of the South Borough Select Board. Um, the first item on the agenda is public comment, and we keep public com public comment as an opportunity for someone to offer a comment. Um, on something that's not on the poster agenda. It's not meant for uh, back and forth, but just comment. And uh, we ask the comments to be kept to three minutes. So is there anyone here that has a, wishes to comment on their public comment? Yeah. All right, well, you come forward and uh, just state your name and address and please. <laughs> We have John and Susan Coffin, 7 Cotton Street. We have two shot clips. One shows current of drainage water on only one side of the road where the house is at. The other clip shows no drainage water on the other side of the road because the reconstruction was we are back because we still have unresolved water drainage problems. The reconstruction of the road was done wrong, which is the root cause of water coming onto our property. I'm so sorry. The way we didn't have that. The, the film never came up. I'm sorry. I don't know. Hold on. Hang on, I just have to share my screen. Stop. And then do you want the other one right away? Hang on. <laughs> Obvious there's no water on the other side of the road. That should say a lot. Okay, go ahead. <clears throat> when road construction is performed that alters the natural water runoff, the party causing the additional water to run to your property can be liable for the resulting damage. Mr. Purple should never have let this self inflicted problem get this far, and we shouldn't have to be here again. Mr. Bill Cundiff, DPW superintendent has not responded for over two months to our questions since his last email on November 30th. He said he won't do anything unless the select board, he won't do anything unless the select board or Mr. Purple direct him to. Only six months employed and he's already telling the select board he won't do his job. Why would Cundiff unconvincingly hide behind the select board to decide if he should fix the problem? Four examples below show anyone in authority other than Cundiff has admitted by their words and actions there is a problem with road construction and drainage. One, when Lazaro Paving was informed of their mistake of paving up to the top of our driveway pavers and not leaving a ridge, why would they ineffectively attempt to blow torch the pavement at the edge of the driveway? Two, Chris Leroy, super, supervisor of the DPW, put sandbags down to prevent water from going onto our property. That was an admission of a problem, and it was meant as a temporary solution until Cundiff came. And now sandbags apparently are permanent. Three, when Ryan Lazaro, paving company owner, visited, he said there is no cap on the center of the road, and the pitch would force rainwater to flow only onto our side of the road. Mr. Lazaro had excellent suggestions for improving the drainage and he was going to meet with Cundiff, but we never heard another word about these ideas afterward. When he discussed the ideas with Cundiff, did Cundiff talk him out of doing anything? 
or did Cundiff make some kind of deal? Or the previous superintendent, Abdul al Khatib, absolutely identified the problem and he was in the process of fixing it when Cundiff came on board. All these people directly contradict Cundiff yes. at every turn. Everything changed with the transition of superintendents, a management failure that negatively affected the Clyder Street reconstruction. Who was responsible for the lack of oversight of the transition? The diagrams Cundiff made were of our ideas and he ineffectively made a crucial mistake on each one as though he didn't understand how to solve the issue. We offered to discuss the face, this face to face and he never responded. This really makes us doubt Cundiff's competency and integrity. If Cundiff has shown you his deceptive video of water leaving our driveway and saying that works, then he doesn't seem to understand that extra water draining into our driveway has already allowed the drainage water to seep into the ground and ultimately into our cellar. We feel we have been played for fools and that Cundiff was never sincere about fixing the water drainage problem. Would sandbags be left down on the north side of town this as a permanent so solution? Five minutes now, if, so if you could please try to just, um, you know. If, uh, if you I just have a little more. Okay, thank you. If there is a maintenance plan to replace sandbags as they wear out, we are already seeing signs of deterioration. So here we are after Cundiff has gone back and forth and stalled us for six months, and he has given us nothing but excuses. Surely Cundiff can use his training to come up with a solution if he tried, instead of sabotaging every idea we come up with. Or is this a result of Cundiff stubbornly sticking to his initial reaction that the easiest thing for him to do is do nothing? I think we may have heard his feelings with our questions. When you are stubborn with a big ego, how are the results any different than if you were incompetent? We understand the need to protect Cundiff as a new hire, but you also need to guide him and hold him accountable before he gets too Thank far you. out so, of line. Uh, we're at six minutes now, so I think I see that you have a written statement. You're more. You please feel free to just send a copy of that to um, the board, Mark, and Mr. Cundiff. So Mr. Can, Dennington, I appreciate okay. you, you given the time you had. You have previously in other meetings given people like us in this particular situation multitudes of time to express themselves. You would also have com comments between the select board and the person. That's bias right now. I just want you to know all we ask for is one more paragraph and you have it, and people, the taxpayers of the town can hear it. All I'm saying is you're not fair with us because I saw you and I saw a couple of the selectmen actually know they were doing it wrong and still having a conversation between each other. There was a two selectmen that I know of that are outstanding and didn't do that. So, and this one of the selectmen that did make a comment knew she was making the comment and said that's okay anyway. Okay. That tells the taxpayer that there are kings and queens in this in this town and a common person can't get out one last paragraph. I, I don't agree, but you're um you know as the chair, one of my responsibilities is to try to manage the, the time. She has one paragraph work, left. Are you willing had to an opportunity to present this issue? On multiple occasions, so we're going to move on to the next item. Thank you. All right, it's um, bias. Thank you. Okay, so um, I want to just give the board uh, the kind of an overview of how I'd like to um, kind of structure the meeting and then move towards um, our goal of at the February 23rd meeting signing 27th at the February 27th meeting signing the warrant. Um, I've got a, I went through the warrant just before the meeting and have a list of articles um, where I think we could possibly vote on them tonight, either because they're um, pro forma articles or the repeats of things that have already been on uh, 2023 annual town meeting warrant. Um, and then I've got a list of the articles where we're gonna hear from people who are um, Sponsors of these articles can just talk to them tonight. So, um, 
does it make sense if I just kind of give this tentative proposal of a list out and then, you know, the board can have the benefit of that as we go through the rest of them, right? So um, what I was thinking was that um, the following articles are ones where let's check in after we have the presentations and see if, if we're ready to vote on them. Uh, one, two, three, nine, 10, 11, 13, 16, 27, 29, I'm sorry, 28 and 29 are the um, PWPB articles where I think we could possibly vote on them tonight, have a, discuss have a discussion about that. Um, 37, 30, I'm sorry, 32. 37. Not 37, that's on my list of people we'll, we'll be hearing from. On 36, okay, that's about the pension bonding. And then 45 and 47 are consent articles where sponsor has already told me he's going to be withdrawing these articles so we could potentially vote on them tonight. And then we're going to be hearing tonight from sponsors of um, 14, 17, 18, those are the rec articles. 44, um, is Paul Sabelli coming? Yep. Uh, as far as I know, yes. Okay, he confirmed. Um, the, the town of clerk articles are 15, 33, 34. And then the tricentennial articles are 37, 30. Anyone have any questions about that list? So then um, Barry Rubenstein is not able to make it. So we're going to be hearing from um, the personnel board about article four at the next meeting. And then um, I know Tim is here is, um, Okay. So Tim, do you want to come forward and um, the articles that I um, had identified are ref related articles are 14 about repurposing the current one black engineering funds to um, construction funds to provide the required match for the dog park grant. And um, 17, which is about creating a recreation facility maintenance revolving fund. <laughs> and um, article 18 is um, the revolving fund limits. And then there's a new item which you're proposing, which would be the, the amount that would go with the new art, right? So I don't know how you and um, Jen wanna divide it up by just looking for kind of a presentation overview about you know what you're looking to do with these articles and and why you feel the select board should um uh vote for it. Sure. Um, so i'll start with 14 which is the one that field um article so just full i guess full context of this um after we've completed kind of our capital campaign internally of all the projects that we had on the table uh, we started looking ahead at future projects and one of the ones that stood out to us was repurposing one blood field and um, uses for that field and one of the um, things that came to the top very quickly was a dog park uh, because of individuals from the community reach out to us but also in response to the master plan that was put out as that was one of the most requested facilities um, of a want uh, with the surveys um, so this past so last year, uh, we started on the process. We brought in uh, engineer, a landscape engineering firm to look at the field and to come up with um, a design. And from there, uh, we looked at funding options for this and we um, focused in on a grant called the Stanton Foundation Grant, 
uh, which specializes and um, is very prominent in the world of constructing dog parks. Uh, we applied for the planning side of that grant uh, and we received it for $25,000 to take care of the planning piece of it. Um, and so once the planning is done, when it comes to um, this project, we can then apply for the construction side of the grant, which is $250,000. Um, it is without saying guaranteed, almost guaranteed that we will get that piece of the grant once you're approved for that planning piece of it. However, the, um, the take or the, the haul on the town side um, for the agreement of that grant is to put up um, a 10% match of the um, facility of the construction project. So currently as it sits with the town, we have a, an engineering and design article, um, which I believe is under phrased as Lundblad, Lundblad Field Design and Specialty Consultant. Um, and so we're looking now that we've gone through that process and used what we feel we need to use from those funds, we're looking to repurpose it to um, construction funds so that we can use that as the match because the amount that's within that article currently uh, would meet that need um, for that amount. So we're just looking to reclassify it so that when we apply for the grant the construction piece of it, uh, we can show that we have the money up front from the town with the support for the match for that. Okay, um, Jen, is there anything you wish to uh, add to that? Nope. Okay. Any questions from the board? Um, one quick one. Could you just <clears throat> describe the original purpose of the one bled engineering funds? My understanding, and Jen can jump in here if I get anything wrong, just because before I came in, but my understanding was to rebuild the field <clears throat> in its entirety, um, just because it is the old landfill, um, taking care of the issues um, underneath the grass there to just reestablish it as a playing field um, in general. So. No, so, and just to, just to clarify, actually, those funds were just to investigate and understand and come up with a plan, right? Because we wanted to better understand what we could do there and what our options were. So that's where we've used parts of that funding for that. Um, and that's all it was for, is for kind of like that, that research and understanding and feasibility. Thank you. All right, uh, Kathy. Okay. Kathy, um, because the way the room is set up, um, I don't, I don't have my computer in front of me. So if you um, want to comment, just kind of speak up and then I'll know that. Okay, great. Can you hear me? I can hear you guys fine. <laughs> All right. Can you I'll hear just me? Say, in, in lieu of the uh, raising the hands on the Zoom, you can also just speak up and then I know you're, you're there. I'm trying to be okay. polite. I'm trying to be polite, Andrew. I, I appreciate that. And then uh, I'm trying to keep the light this thing. I can't see you with the back of my head. Um, so, uh, okay. do you got a question for? Um, I do. Tim, about Article 2014. Uh, so, hi, Jen. Hi, Tim. Um, so, this is a naive question. Is Lumblad going to still be used as a field or is it going to be used totally as a dog park? Is what I don't understand what the plan is long term. I thought we were putting a dog park around the field. So clarify what what the plan is. The dog park would take up about 40 percent of the field. So we would still maintain a full size grass natural surface field um, next to it. That we would use Tim as a field. Correct. Yep. OK, now. Um, the study that was done with the old article um, was not a study to um, develop a dog park. It was just a general study to see what we could use this field for. Is that correct, Jen? Yeah. So we had spent we spent some of the funds over the course of like a couple of years towards that. So it was like there was an older study done to understand like where the status of the field, the status of the cap because it's on top of a old um, landfill. So some of those, that's what the money went towards these studies and understanding what was going on there. And then understanding as we look at that field, how do we design it to keep the field in a, for more of like grass play and usage for sports up there? Cause we use it as more of like an auxiliary field for training and practice, but then also scope out how could we also bring dog park elements to like, you know, that other, the further side of it. So that's the study that's been going on over the last like three or four years since this originally was on town floor. 
Okay, so the following is really important. Um, so you know we are planning on a really significant school project with Neary, right? Either tearing Neary down, building a new school, uh, or building a new bigger school, or rehabbing and adding to Neary. So there's like six permutations of what we're looking at as far as Neary goes. So one of the recent meetings, someone said the following, um, I am concerned about the Lumblad field. Um, they didn't believe that whatever's been done um, concluded that everything was safe, capped, et cetera. So my question to you, I haven't read the report, obviously I wouldn't be asking this. Um, does the report confirm that everything is safe and properly capped so that we really can go forward with the dog? It concludes we really can put the dog park there safely. Are we at that point that we've done everything we need to do to go forward with the dog park? Yes, to our understanding, yes. And Mr. Conduit can tell me separately, but no, the study of the, the membrane and everything under the field was was complete and um, we're confident that we can go forward with the dog park piece of it. Okay, because Tim, I think we've got to kind of watch the Neary project too, because I know that one of the plans is to hire some type of professional to look at that piece of it to make sure that it's all going to work. So I know there's going to be some money spent through that project as far as looking at it. So putting that aside for a moment, um, back to what you want to do tonight. So if you need, it looks like $25,000 to do the match, Jen. It's, so the match is based on the final cost of the project, right? Okay, so that explains why you don't, you're not putting 25,000 in circle. You'd like to put the whole thing till you know what it is. Right. right. So we're we're looking to slightly repurpose the wording to give us more flexibility. So if we need to do further studies on that or if or to be able to use that as the match if it if we do move forward with this dog park. And and asking for it to go now because this grant that we're pretty confident would fund the dog park ends in a year and is no longer available off the table. So we've got a, a timeline on this that is going to end. So is your plan once town meeting comes and goes to immediately pull the trigger on this grant application? Correct. That would be the intent to see if we can get it funded. Okay. Um, and then you'll be able to show them you've got the match sitting there to be able to do that exactly. piece. Okay. So um, now I'm clear as to what's going on. I just kind of lost track of where we were with this. Now, so this is my only issue with this. I, I'm fine. Um, you know, trying to fund the matcher. This is great leverage. My gosh, if you can only pay 10% of the cost, we should do that. <clears throat> so kudos on that one. But I just got a, this is a form over substance argument. Um, I have a problem with repurposing old articles. Um, I've seen people do it over the years. Um, in some cases, I didn't agree with what was being done. And I think you need to be very strict as far as an article. This is what the town approved and stick with it. I have no problem with a new article, um, putting the same, you know, closing this one out and doing a new one. So again, this is form over substance. So I'm not um, opposed to doing this. I just would rather do it a different way. But let's see what everybody else says too, and we can figure out how to get this done. Um, so before we... Bill is, uh, do you want to speak to the uh, issue that Tim was talking about? Yes. Okay. Come on. <clears throat> yeah. As Tim referenced, um, the DEP did contact my office. Um, as you know, we oversee the inspections of the landfill. Um, and the person that I spoke with basically said they, they are missing some documentation in their files regarding the proper closure of the landfill. So I'm in the process of going through my files. I've gone through the Board of Health files to locate the documentation that they're missing. Um, assuming we locate that, there should not be an issue. Um, if we don't locate that, that could be problematic for the proposal. All right, understood. Well, I hope, I'm sure this will be found. <laughs> How long do you think it's likely to take to find? It's, it's, yeah. a, it's a matter of weeks, sir. I would say weeks. We, 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 we should have it. I'm um, pretty sure you know where it's it If be. it's existing, yeah. Okay. And one more question. Uh, what's the current balance on the uh, the fund? Uh, $46,411. It's, it's what's in the article, same amount. 
Correct. Yep. This is what's left of the art. Right. Okay. That's the entire data amount. Um, do you have anticipated uses of that money beyond this? Uh, no. As of right now, no. Kind of our full focus is that field and getting this thing yeah. done That's into it. All right. So, that, so there might be some money you don't need from the current loan that engineering funds for the requirements at the end. Of the at the end. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. By the fence, so, so, yeah. so they do the grant, they get it, they match it, then we close it out if, if there's money left over. Yeah. Marguerite? No question. Yes, I understand Kathy's conceptual point. I guess I'm not concerned about repurposing in this case. Yeah, I feel the same one. It's for the same property. Um, there's a timeliness element to it, so I, I support this. Um, and I think it would be helpful, um, Jen and uh, Tim, if, you know, for the for the summary under this article, which is not in the warrant yet, and, and maybe in the next draft of that, we can see it is just like in three sentences, you know, you can explain, you know, what you've just explained to us so that when people come to town meeting, they'll be, we won't have to have, the, you know, the same discussion that we just had here, right? Mm -hmm. Or people will be prepared for it. But overall, I think, you know, people want to have a dog park. We don't right now have a dog park. People will be excited about it. And I think people will be enthusiastic about supporting it. So I'm not, I'm not going to the mat on this one at all. Um, I'm fine because it is very close. And I think yeah. a town meeting, you just need to let everyone know that that's where you're heading to build a dog park. And I agree, it's a very popular thing. But Tim, this is where I really caution you and Jen, I think you need to have a meeting sometime soon before you really go forward this with the um, chair of the Neary Building Committee and possibly the OPM and possibly the architect, which has now been hired. Make sure they know what you're trying to do here so there's no conflict with what they're looking at. Um, again, I don't know where the Neary, new Neary school is going to be um, if we build a home and where they're going to put it. I don't know if this field is going to be in conflict with that. So I just know there's been some concerns raised at some of these meetings about the alum black field. Yeah, I know we've had conversations all along also with like the school department and committee and stuff like that, but we can reach out to this Neary one as well to just tie that off. Yeah. And Greg Martineau, um, Jen, is very much part of this committee. Um, and Keith Lavoy, who sits right there. Okay. In and both of them are in on all of this. We've shared plans. Okay. They know everything that we're doing. Yep. All right. And, and so that if there's money, if there's a delta left over, like if you, the required match is 25000 then the intent would be we would just close out the remaining balance. Likely. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. Good. Um, okay. The next is um, the, the revolving fund, uh, maintenance revolving fund 17 and 18. And um, same thing, if you can just kind of explain mm -hmm. uh, what you're looking to do here. Um, and then we'll just forget to adopt questions from the board. So, um, so we're looking to establish an outdoor facilities maintenance fund, um, not per se a, a, a revolving fund. It's but, not a revolving uh, fund. Um, I already got plenty of those. <laughs> um, so this is uh, for investment in, uh, above and beyond maintenance of our outdoor facilities. Um, the reason that I put this forward was over the last four years now, since I've been here, um, we've you know we've done pretty substantial capital improvement to outdoor facilities. Um, just in my time, just over 1.1 million in both grass fields, sport courts, hardtops, lights just about a little bit of everything across the town. And we're at the point now where um, we can start to institute our maintenance and resting plan of all of our fields. Um, so this um, piece of money would go towards, again, above and beyond maintenance of our fields. So additional fertilization, additional seeding of um, grass fields that we identify that we want to, um, that we see need a little more love, a little more TLC outside of the general maintenance, but also um, taking into account the repairs that our facilities have been calling for, uh, playgrounds, the track, tennis courts, pickleball courts, um, a little bit of everything. So this is to assist again in that above and beyond maintenance to take care of these fields. So I'm not coming back to you in a couple of years asking for another you know, half million dollars to rip up another field. Um, but to make sure we're protecting the assets and the investments that um, we put in and doing the, um, the yearly maintenance that is required to uphold everything. So that's obviously a big deal. I, I was understanding from the 
And so it's not a revolving fund. No. It's just a one-time fiscal year, 2025, $30,000. 25. 25. I'll take care of it. Yeah, but they're going to want to replenish this, Andrew. Um, it's good. It's much more like John Parent's hundred thousand dollar facilities article. Not a ball. Not a ball. Okay, so then we need to redo ca capture this uh, differently than before. All right. Um, do you have a list of the things? I know you gave some now, mm -hmm. but like that informed your estimate <laughs> of the twenty five thousand. So. The thing that informed it was the last couple of years we've been putting in pretty substantial work to specific facilities in town. Yep. Um, Trotter Track Interior Field, um, the Petri Field that we recently just renovated, as well as um, Choke right next to us here at Woodward. Um, and the extra care and the maintenance that was needed on those with Andrew and Chris from DPW. Um, made all the difference in those fields. Um, when we look specifically at Trottier, of oh, the extra maintenance that he put into that, um, Trottier was originally on the capital plan, I think in about three years to replace, that can go completely off the table. Um, and the, the fields that he's been working on have been brought back to life and probably some of the best fields in our region. So now when we're looking ahead, specifically Calander would be our next one to go on. We just spent a whole lot of money and a whole lot of time yeah. making sure that puppy works the way it does. Um, and now it's to make sure that it establishes correctly, that it functions correctly, so that now when all these fleets are going on it, um, we protect it. So that's about 15 to 20,000 is what's being estimated for um, from Public Works, again, with Chris and Andrew. And then that, that five, uh, around that five, we're talking about um, playground repairs that we're seeing pop up much more. Um, just in this past year, our um, inspections yielded about seven grand worth of repairs and replacement parts. Um, again, the cracks in the tennis courts to make sure that we're, we're repairing those and not just letting those get even worse to put us in a situation like we were down at Finn um, and Mooney on those courts to have to completely replace them. So general preventative maintenance that we can do to just elongate the lives of the upper facilities. And then, so if this is approved, then you have a you have a proposal on how you're going to spend it, then it, it would be subject to the capital policy, right? right. So was it 10,000 or if it's going to be about 10,000? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And then it'd be on a select board agenda. About, so there'd be right. some kind of oversight. Yeah. And capital put in the, the stop gap of uh, working with Mark, I believe, to yeah. approve the um, expenditures as well as the commission. Too. So the same, same as the facilities. Same as facilities. It's almost right. mimicking that. Questions? One question, uh, suggestion. Um, preventative maintenance is a good story, I think. And um, on the fields, you might give some specific examples as you're talking to people about it. I'm assuming that things like aeration, mm -hmm. overseeding, those kind of things. Right. You just might give people more specific examples as you explain it. Yeah. And then link tying that in to say, uh, you know, again, that then mitigates the need for a rebuild, sort of like. Road paving in a sense that you do preventing payments and you don't have to come back to the full rebuild on it. So I think that makes a lot of sense. So, um, this one, I totally support the concept of um, protecting our fields, et cetera. No, no issue there. Um, my question is on the funding of it. So we're talking about an article that you'll want to have on the warrant every single year going forward. Um, you think it's about 30 a year. John Parent does 100 a year. Um, and he spends it all. So he just asked for another 100 because that's about what he needs. You guys think it's 30. So that sounds like a reasonable number. Um, I can't tell if Mr. Cundiff is still here, but I assume that um, maintaining these fields in the manner you're talking about is not part of the general landscape contract we have. I think I've been told that. So I assume you agree with that. Um, but let's talk about the REC revolving fund as a source of this. I assume that if you thought you could use the REC revolving fund for this, you had the money to do it, you would have proposed doing it that way, or am I wrong? No, you're correct. correct. So just to clarify, it's only $25,000 we are looking to fund into this uh, this first year. And I think as we look at what's coming down the, the pipeline, like mm -hmm. that can be adjusted as we look at this fund, but the REC revolving is for REC programming, Right. And so we like on some of these fields and these properties, we don't have rec programming. So we really can't spend out of that onto, onto this like capital maintenance. Um, and it is something that we've been 
like every year we talk to capital about like, okay, we're going to need, a, we're looking at another 10 grand for this field. And we're looking at like eight grand for this and five grand for that. So the intent here is to figure out like how much do we actually need to be responsible and take care of this and ask for it once a year. And then it would be funded out of there, but revolving, like that's not a source for this revolving is investing back in our programs. It's sourcing like a new kiln when the pottery kiln breaks, it's fixing the van for, for driving the kids around and it's for investing in like the equipment that, that ages out that we have to replace. And I thought you might, that might be the reason, Jen, but I did think there were some use of the fields for, for various rec purposes, but you're saying generally not. So um, this needs to come separately. Okay, I'm, I'm fine. Yeah, don't, yeah ju just for Kathy's clarification, um, we do have our grounds contract going out tomorrow to bid, um, and we do include the same fields and scope that we had previously. So yes, we are maintaining the fields. But Bill, you're not doing what they're talking about doing, which is this resting and doing the things you do when you rest. This is truly beyond that contract, correct? Yeah, no, this is the basic maintenance. Whatever um, they want to do beyond the basic maintenance is certainly up to them. Yeah. Preventative, preventative maintenance. Right. Okay. Um, any other questions? I think it's money well spent. Thank you. I don't say that often. Wait a minute. Put, 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 put that out here. Yeah. No, I, I knew he would say that. He's why we've got the facilities fund. So I knew he I knew I would say that. Okay. Um well then I think we're we're all set. Great. Great. Thank you for your uh appreciate it. Thank you. This is a very, you know, as usual, generally a very you know, well organized uh good presentation. You anticipated questions from my yes and give us good answers. Thank you, John, as well. Thanks so much. All right. Thanks. Okay. Um, there he is. Very short. Um, Paul? So, uh, Paul's here to speak to Article 44. And I know, Sam, you had a question about this last time. I did. Okay. Just saying before we start, everybody understands the difference between an abatement and an exemption, correct? People use these interchangeably. So just for everybody that's watching, your real estate exemption is a is tax release for tax relief for individuals who meet defined qualifications and file timely, whereas an abatement is simply somebody disputing their value. Two totally different things, both funded out of the overlay account. Also, the other thing is exemptions. They all come from the state. We don't make up our own. Um, they're programs that come out of the mass general laws. And typically what happens, um, many of them have a local option. So when they come up with something new, um, it's a, a lot of times it's a local option to adopt. And that's where this came out. We review the uh, um, law changes that come about that affect our department. And uh, Lori brought this one out that we had not uh, um, considered. Uh, so she thought it was good to put in front of our board and here. Um, I'm not going to read through it. I guess I'm here just because of questions. I'm sure everybody understands yep. with their reading. So I'll do my best and I'll be honest. I will put the disclaimer out there. Uh, Lori is the expert on these. So um, she couldn't make it tonight. So I'm actually the fill-in. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so Mr. Chandon, what do we got? Um, I don't have any questions, but Sam? I have a few comments. Yeah. As I mentioned last time, um, I certainly support uh, uh, these types of programs, but it seems to me that the focus of this kind of exemption should be on spouse and uh, uh, dependents of service members who are killed or missing in action. And um, I understand I did attend the board assessors meeting recently and, and talked about this in terms of some of the details. And it's clear that this is a state uh, law that we can either accept or not we don't have much option to uh, modify this at this point. So we have it's, none. It's yes or no. Sam, I didn't give you, when you showed up, Sam showed up, we were kind of in a hurry. I just wanted to, we, we said there was other things out there, but we really didn't explain right. it. Yeah. So I think I, I, what I really want to tell you is there's a clause 22D, okay? And that is, we have that, and that is for surviving spouses, yep. okay? Who have never remarried of military personnel, including members of the National Guard on, actively, on active duty. 
who went missing in action during active duty and are uh, presumed to, be, to have died or two military personnel, including members of the National Guard or active duty or veterans who died uh, as a proximate result of injuries sustained from illness con uh, contracted during active duty. Uh, a surviving spouse must have lived in Massachusetts for two years and all that good stuff. Um, but we already have something for the spouses, okay? And I don't think I... You mentioned that there were programs. You went out the door and we didn't really give you the details because I didn't have them in front of me. So there is already something out there. And I certainly support that. In fact, I'd even support broadening that to not necessarily, you know, remarried exclusion kind of thing. But again... State legislation. I understand. Um, so I'm I'm certainly supportive, again, the okay. basic concept. I'm less enthusiastic for this one than seeing parents, frankly. But, um, you know, I, and the other comment or question I, I had for the board uh, of assessors was how many people do we have in town who are um, eligible for this today or likely to be eligible? And the answer was zero right at this point. Thanks, so God. It's, yeah, that's good mm -hmm. news. This is, uh, this is one we put on the books and we hope the heck yeah. we never receive the vacant application because it'll be a tragic situation if yeah. we are. Yeah. Okay, so again, I, I'm conflicted about this one, but I understand more clearly what the choice is. I did want to mention too, um, Sam, is the 22D, which I just read off, is fully reimbursed by the state. Uh, this new 22H is not. Uh, um, and I think it just, um, they haven't caught up with, with the yeah. uh, reimbursement portion of it. I'm even less focused on the reimbursement thing in terms of the support of the members. Okay, so we do have for the spouses. Any other questions? No questions? Um, no, I mean, I'm parent of two veterans, so I'm in favor of this. What's that? I'm the parent of two veterans. Uh, Excellent. Uh, I hope we never use it. Yeah, let's, uh, let's all pray we don't. I think it's a good thing to have in our repertoire um, to help people uh, in a very sad situation. Do you know if there are other surround, uh, what's the trend of other towns? That I know North from the board over there, so I know they've accepted it. I haven't really gone out a okay. wide range yeah. on who's <laughs> there, um, who hasn't. Um, most towns, if they are aware of it, they'll, they'll adopt it. Yeah. And I think everybody tries to do the best they can for uh, the veterans. I think this one's widely supported, Sam. Um, you know, parents, um, I'm not sure what the issues with parents, you know, they can be pretty young if they, you know, they can go in when they're 18, right? So you could have parents in their mid 40s, early 50s. So I'm all for making it pretty broad. So um, I just can't believe there'd be too many people that wouldn't support this. We're looking uh, probably to have this on the consent agenda like we usually do in a lot of these. Um, that's why we're hoping to have everybody's support. <clears throat> okay. All right. All right. Thank Thanks. you to you Thank and you. Lori for finding it. Yes. <laughs> Take care, guys. Have a great night. No. no. He's so he's finishing up his election training. He'll be open it up. Okay. Maybe we'll switch. go to the uh, description. Mr. Lawrence. Well, you can, you can jump to that. You can. Yeah. Sure. Um, I think you need to go Yeah. Um, while Bill is still here, wanted to see if um, anyone had a hold on the, uh, the job description for Civil Engineer 1. Bill Holtz? Not me. Okay. You didn't want to change the language? Um, I don't think so. Okay. All right. Well, that's the only thing that's on there. All right. So, I think we're going to approve it. Thank so, you. Uh, no, no questions. Great. All right. Have a good night. Have a good night. Good. See you. Okay, so we'll, uh, we'll wait for Jim and um, Don. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Back. <laughs> That's when you thought you were out, huh? <laughs> no, I wasn't. I had to speak to you uh, 37, 38. That'll be fun. The million dollar tricentennial celebration. We're going to head in the right direction soon. So, yeah, we have two arms. 
And what were the numbers again, Mark? It's 37, 37, 37, 30 days. Yep. I have most of this X and X. Yeah. All right. So, um, I mean, Vanessa, I think you had said you, you found 37 based on something similar. Yeah, we looked at some um, sample articles from other communities, yeah. um, like Westboro and Shrewsbury and some uh, other municipalities who have already been through this process. Okay. Uh, and then the committee reviewed them at the last pricing committee. Okay. And then um, 38, we would need to have a there too. Right. So the first article 37 would be to create the fund to receive the money yeah. either through town meeting or donations or sponsorships. Yeah. And the second article would be to provide some seed money for the team. Okay. And um, do you have an idea about the appropriate amount of seed money that you'd be looking for? Yes. All right. What is it? Um, so this article 38 is um, the text is significantly different than the last one that we looked at. Probably needs to be updated. Oh, okay. Um, this 38 reads, uh, this is as a result of our last meeting and Vanessa and I doing um, some draft language and uh, research. A lot of research into this uh, project. To see if the town will vote to transfer and appropriate the sum of $30,000 or such other amount as town meeting may approve for the purpose of funding events. For example, fireworks, parade, public art, et cetera, as authorized by the uh, Tricentennial Committee celebrating the town of South Road, South Road's incorporation, or take any uh, other action there too. There's many, there's, we've seen several different ways of uh, the funding article. Uh, this is this captures, I think, what we want with the fewest words. And then we've we've uh, our research uh, takes us. It's surprisingly difficult to get this information, but we're still working here. But um, um, we found that uh, we looked at Westboro, and they did their they their three hundred was in uh, uh, two thousand seventeen. And one of the town meeting articles, which we have here, uh, they asked for 25,000. And it was uh, for the purpose of paying the cost for a fireworks show. So they had 25,000 just for the fireworks show, 2017. And then one of the best um, towns that we uh, were able to get really good information on well, it's a town of Northfield. Anybody know where that is? I do. It's up by uh, the southern New Hampshire border and uh, from And what, uh, what they did is, is uh, similar to what we had envisioned doing, and we're pleased to see that uh, this town, and I think some others once we get the info from the right people will we'll have done this already or are doing it. So their 350th uh, celebration is what's well, in 2023. It's just last year, a month ago, they ended. And they started in 2020 with an article for um, uh, $5,000. In 2021, they um, asked the town for uh, 5000 um, another 5000 I got off this slow start. 2022, they asked for and got they, they, all of these passed unanimously uh, 60000 in 2022, which is the year. Uh, the celebration, and then 2023, FY 23, they're, they're 2023, uh, they asked for a rather specific amount, it's 11,980. I think was when they got to that point on the, on the threshold of the, of the celebration, they realized that they needed a little bit more to get across the goal line and finish up what they wanted to do. This adds up to, I think, over 80,000 bucks. 
So um, asking for the 30,000 up front um, is necessary. And as, it, as, as the article reads, it's for the purpose of, um, as, a, as an exa as example, uh, you know, fireworks parade, public art. And we have the committee has um, identified uh, at our last meeting, and these are just the ones that we wrote down. That one, the ideas that are still uh, floating around up there would be a grand parade, uh, St. Patrick's Day uh, breakfast, an old fashioned town family barbecue, bands, contests, games, boots, golf tournament, old time softball tournament, arts festival. Fourth of July laser election. I don't think we've ever had one of those. October uh, would be uh, brewery tastings. I have those in this room. So. <laughs> Historic homes holiday tours. Those are all, already happening in the very popular. Bicentennial uh, gala uh, dinner event. A grand finale with live fireworks and music. And then things that um, we're hoping to, you know, those those are events, but there are other things uh, like tree plantings. We don't get the donations for the trees, we purchase trees. And we would start that right away, start that this, this year, tree planting so that we uh, have hopefully uh, live trees to show the people who are in uh, 2027. Historic photo and document displays, educational events in schools. We think the schools are a huge uh, opportunity and, and the necessity for the children to make sure that uh, you know, they, they have a, a feel for how old the town is and a look back at the uh, different people and the way that people lived back 300 years ago. And then the uh, <coughs> memorabilia and merchandise, which we would um, <clears throat> jump on that right away. Also uh, figuring that uh, we would have a booth at Heritage Day and other uh, outlets throughout the town, not just on that day, uh, <coughs> other places where you could buy 300, 300 um, anniversary t-shirt, I think somebody was talking about Christmas ornaments, candles, all that stuff that other towns um, have for theirs, and they were um, they not only pay for themselves, but they money banks. So that's the type of things that we want to choke on. We feel that the thirty thousand is uh, consistent, and having that kind of money up front, if we're able to load load up these programs and get more uh, interest and in it. Excitement about it, it might encourage more donations and participation. And then at some point, it would be it would be great to uh, pay it all back. But uh, this article would, would get us launched and get us started in the right direction. And it's consistent so far with uh, the towns that we have looked at how they did it. Some of them start off slow and then they have to have a big chunk right before it. If that doesn't pass, then you don't have much of a celebration. Kind of doing it as a state thing. See where that takes us. And we're also, um, the committee is hard at work at researching um, other towns that, like Holliston, for example, if you've ever seen their websites, it's fabulous. And, and that's, are they, is that 2027 or 2026? Well, you can that right now. Yeah. I think they're 2026. Yeah, they, they have a great website, very, uh, very active, very full. And uh, it's their own website. It's not, it's, it's uh, not a um, website. They have a town website, but essential to that. Right, you to come that other website. And that costs money, too. But we want to get started with that. 
So uh, we'll need to update the language in the draft award so it has a $30,000 figure. Yeah, and other, yes. other language because we were, um, we're aware that people are going to say, well, what, what are we going to get for 30000 And so we, we pointed to a few uh, no-brainers, like the parade, the fireworks. Um, we, and, um, and it's not just associated with events. It's also uh, uh, the language talks about uh, uh, paraphernalia, merchandise, and other things. Okay. So we can. So we have a descriptive yeah. language in the work, too, in addition specific language so some of the yeah so some of the wording that you see again the warrant still says draft so it, it's trying to at least put something in there it's a little more than a placeholder it gives you a little bit of an understanding but obviously the final language you know needs to be worked out on a lot of these um and so you know the committee has continued to work towards that so you know we'll update that language in the next draft yeah. our, our our language was reviewed by uh, our committee uh, Last week, right? last week, yeah, and yeah. Um, everyone felt we got get get it to you guys. The town council's cool with it. If everyone else is cool with it, then um, working. Right. All Thank right. I, I just quick Marty. question: um, Are you involving the um, Bay and St. Marks in the discussions? Not yet, but our discussions uh, at our meetings when any any time we talk about schools. Absolutely. Pay okay. School, St. Mark's, Algonquin, and uh, the NECC. Yeah. What's that saying? NECC. Yes, so now that's cool. Right. Yeah. And it's not just a one way street. We want to certainly uh, have involvement from all of the students, but we also want to uh, maybe use some of their facilities. <laughs> well, I was going to suggest they might also be a source of funding. But I would check with the pilot committee. And my other question is, is this going to be an entire calendar year of celebrations? That's our goal. So it would start on New Year's Day. Sorry. Well, <laughs> that's really good. That's, I think that's where the committee's kind of leaning. Is people wake up from the hangover and the skies, <laughs> the skies will be. <laughs> oh, mm, pretty odd. But the, we've again we've seen from other towns, including uh, Northfield, uh, where they've had them uh, uh, virtually every month, and some some months uh, a couple of different things. Some are uh, like things like the line, so it's 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 interesting to some people, and other things about playing fields, snow covered fields. So it's and I'm wondering how many different sets of reenactors can we get <laughs> for the different types. We're learning from uh, uh, one of our early taps of knowledge. Uh, Hudson. Hudson had uh, their 150th in 2016. Yeah, 2016 was their 150th. And uh, Brian Stearns, our uh, Veterans Age. Uh, he he prepared this book, and he I think was the lead on Hudson's parade. It's just their parade, and he, he uh, it's 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 incredible what, what they did for a parade, and uh, you know, our parades you know from the railroad tracks to the town hall. <laughs> but we've also had uh, ideas where um, we could. Uh, have a rolling parade, like uh, with vehicles and, and antique cars, uh, muscle cars, fancy cars, jalopies, and start uh, as far away as uh, the Ashland Mine and take all of like Southfield Road and work through the neighborhoods, Quarterville Road, uh, Fable. Bar Street Nine, um, and and all wind up um, at, at where we always wind up so by the town hall. We'll have um, you know, you know, booths and, and food food trucks and that type of thing, so that every neighborhood uh, could be involved in some events. 
So I think hey, your your ideas are welcome. Kathy? So hi Don, it's it's nice to see you back in action <laughs> and hear you. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you know, 30K sounds light to me, but I am interested in seeing, you know, um, do, do you have a plan to actually start soliciting donations from the businesses in South Carolina? Well, um, we, we have an early plan, but we want to make sure we do it right. Um, we have a, um, a draft uh, introduction letter that um, we reviewed at our last meeting and hope to have it um, signed and available to the public before uh, the town meeting and as a handout. So it would go on, on the town website, but it'll also be a handout. And it would be sent to um, how many but people a lot of the community organizations, town departments, businesses. Um, so a, a real broad um, outcast with their introductory letter. And the introductory letter, uh, the way we tried to write it was to introduce ourselves and what the mission is and actually tell some people, I don't know how many people you've talked to, but I, I'm su surprised at when I say, well, we're getting ready for the 300, man, when's that? I know. And I could, I could see that if it wasn't on, towns, wasn't on the town's, wasn't on the town's- Every sign. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sealed, yeah. Yeah, on the town seal. Well, every time you drive into town. People are busy. So right. Don, so it does sound like the committee um, believes it's part of their charge to um, develop a program to solicit donations. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Good. All right. So I mean, the thirty again to me, you know, what you need is going to depend on that too. That you know, the ultimate need of what the town needs to fund depends on how that that goes. Um, as far as the three main schools, I'm the um, select board liaison to those three schools. So I would like to work with you on those to make sure we don't go at cross purposes with with those. Um, the pilot, pilot committee's um, sole charge is to do research and um, make recommendations to the select board, not to deal with the schools directly. <laughs> So I would love to work with you on um, talking to the three of them. They have, um, they've all got great people now. They're in transition to the three. Um, headmasters are changing. In one case, the board chair changed. So um, I'm happy to work with you on reaching out to them because I do think they uh, will want and can play a significant role um, for the Tricentennial. But I certainly support both articles. Thank you. And, and we, we actually discussed that and we wanted to, again, we want to make sure that we do it right and not offend people, not come out too strong, but also not miss opportunities. So um, we had yeah. uh, we in, we invited Tim, uh, the rec uh, director, at our last meeting, and uh, without too much effort, actually no effort, he uh, <laughs> volunteered uh, to uh, be a huge uh, uh, helper and even. Uh, formalize it with a subcommittee that would he that he would uh, lead. And now, Kathy, without uh, uh, consider yourself, um, you know, in charge of a, a school subcommittee <laughs> for the tricentennial. Congratulations. Yeah, and th that's one thing the committee hasn't done yet, but we'll do, I think, within the next, you know, six months or so, figure out, you know, what subcommittees, there has to be a separate subcommittee, you know, for a grand parade you know, for sponsorships, for marketing. So I think all of that stuff is starting, they're starting to flesh out now. This is great. We're, we're actually going to have uh, people that want to be on the subcommittee that doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. It's much easier than being on one that does exist. <laughs> uh, can I add a comment? Yes. Um, uh, picking up on your point about the, the software schools, um, we are actually rolling forward with the Master Plan Implementation Committee, and I'm a member of that. And uh, uh, I've been working with Judith Watson on that relative to the connection to the schools in terms of tracking master plan goals, et cetera. And Judith and I had the opportunity recently to meet with uh, Greg Martindale and Stephanie Ryan Martin schools to talk about what they're doing relative to what the master plan is doing. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we pulled out of the master plan was the tricentennial uh, celebration. And they got very excited about ways to connect the school program. Stephanie had several great ideas about things that, uh, that she could do to uh, drive that process through the school program and the curriculum, et cetera. And volunteered, she said it would be great if we could be a member of the committee or at least be ad hoc or something on that committee. 
So I think there's a real opportunity to uh, connect there. And again, there are, uh, I think there's a lot of excitement, enthusiasm. And if it's coming from the top like that, I think that makes it much more effective to drive through the organization. So I could envision a series of activities that school kids are involved in throughout the year, both educationally as well as event-wise, that uh, can be very, very powerful. So I would encourage you to push on that and um, reach out to Wright and Stephanie, see what they had in mind there and work with them. Okay. That's that's consistent with the discussions that we've had. Good. And um, at our last meeting, we talked about uh, the resources and the uh, um, excellent uh, opportunities for video. A hundred years ago, there wasn't. Well, it wasn't still it's now. <laughs> the, thumb, the thumb drives were not still. When you and I were boys. <laughs> but uh, Algonquin has the ability, and I think even Trotter has the ability to make a movie. Yes. Yep. And then there was discussion of a. Uh, of a, of a play, a live play that the children could put on at mm -hmm. different times during the year at different age groups. Yeah. And again, history projects where the kids uh, go out and interview people who were you know, elderly people in town who have memories of software from decades ago kind of things could be, I think, interesting involved in things. Lots of opportunities, but they seem to be very excited about finding ways to, to integrate school programs with this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is actually there's one entity in town which has been in continuous operation since 1727. Um, and it's this board. And you know, we have this, you know, amusing form of local government that predates the, the constitution. And you know, we can look at some of the records in Jim's office. Uh, we've been basically arguing about the same stuff for now sneaking up on 300 years. And uh I think, I think this board actually has a, has the temporary occupants of the, this seat as a role to play in in the history. Okay. Well, the first meeting where we could argue about how much to pay the pastor and how, why why we need to teach kids to read. Those cows. All right. So Tim Tim has a comment. Does anyone else on the board have a comment? Before? Tim, you wanna? I guess. You know, I think that no, you can speak right from there. Yeah, these microphones will pick you up. So, so oh, Tim, Kathy, let, let us know if you can't hear. Can you hear Tim? Let, can you hear me or not? I guess no, no. I guess the answer is not. I can hear you fine. Right. Oh, fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I just wanted to comment a little bit on the on the public art suggestion. Uh, a friend of mine is uh, um, an artist mostly sculpture, but other things. He's made a living doing public art, mostly in, in Maine. And I just wanted to um, advise you that public doing, getting public art done takes time, it takes money, it takes effort. There's usually a lot of negotiation in terms of, well, what do you want for the art? And you know, how are you going to afford it and, and all that? So while well, I think it's a great idea, I want to make sure that you um, don't underestimate the investment you have to make in having something like that come to pass. So would you be interested in serving at uh, <laughs> so no, the art subcommittee? No, I'm not the artist. And he lives in Maine. So we, we do have an art on the trails annually. Oh, I've, I've let him know about that, and he has chosen not to that is, participate. That is oh. relatively not that costly and uh, very popular. So tying into those folks. Don, you may want to, your committee may want to think about a, an art installation or an art piece for the new, the new park. There's been some early, uh, I don't think we talked about it uh, in public, but um, different people that I've talked to, um, you know, like a bronze plaque um, or a uh, statue of Paul Berry on the town <laughs> common. Um, you know, sometimes. I mean, you go back over 100 years, you know, statues of the civil death people. So, I mean, that that's big money. And, yeah. Um, but they're, they're, um, they're not off the table. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, something can't be nothing. We could 
have an art piece that would last another 100 years, that'd be great. And of course, the children, the kids, one of the things we're talking about is uh, the logo and um, have a contest to see see that. And what, what was I talking about the other night? It, it was on TV and they had three, was it? Like some kind of forget. But the uh, fourth graders did uh, like an art thing. They were 300 or 200. And uh, it was pretty cool. Yeah. Some of that, I think, came from the recent anniversary of the Boston Tea Party. I think we were looking at that website, too. All right. Sounds great. Okay. So it sounds like um, I didn't hear any questions about the form of Article 37. Right. And then 30, 38, we just need to see the, um, the, the most up-to-date version of the next term. Like, yeah, and we're, we're. I think we will get a little bit more specific in the summary too. Summary, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the, the, the language of the article. Right. The well, committee's so. meeting again um, next week, actually. Yeah. So we'll, we'll be tying up all those details by the end of next week. All right. Um. I think, I think we're all set. So Al said something about the board, the uh, select board, uh, making sure that they fully uh, participate and support. So we would hope that we would get uh, unanimous support for our articles. I will say though, I think that for this, even though it's gonna be unanimously supported, that it should not be on the consent agenda because I, my, my opinion, because no. there would be value for you to, to explain this yeah. So that everyone who's there understands us and to generate some. Right. Yeah. And put out a put out a suggestion box right there on the tab. Yeah, it's free publicity. <laughs> Not a suggestion box, Margarita, a box to collect checks. <laughs> Volunteer and donation box. Instead of the box, we can use it like a drum. <laughs> no, that you you're right, Andrew. That okay. It's a it's a good platform yeah. and as long as the uh, town moderator gives us, you know. More than a couple of minutes. Maybe that's all we need. But uh, get the word out. Have people yeah, start right. getting excited. Thank you. Bring out the old stocks for those who don't donate. There you go. <laughs> where did they, were there stocks in South Park? Oh, well, there's I actually think it's I think it should actually be a reinstitute stocks. Yes. Yeah. We can sell chances in an hour of stocks. All right. $10. Okay. Oh, you ready to move on to the Jen Myers article? Real. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, thanks, 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 Don. Thank you very much. I think we should go to select Remember, they were all farmers. They came as they were. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah, I can smell as well. I have four articles that uh, you I just want to make sure we get the numbers right. By the way, do you have a draft? Most recent. We got on your phone. Yes. Okay. Uh, this is what's in the, the packet. Fifteen. Thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five. And shrine was Yes. Okay. Let's start with 15 and go through them. 15 is asking uh, for funds uh, to scan documents in the office that uh, are historical in nature that cannot be scanned either in house or through the use of CPC money. CPC will only allow scanning if it uh, is part of the preservation and these documents don't need it because of the odd size of these and so forth. It needs a uh, a very uh, unique characteristic. I think it's almost like scales the way these, these scales work for these things. This is also something that I have an offer request in for you as well. Okay, so, yeah. uh, um, that's what I was thinking. Fair enough. So the the amount would be the same as the upper request, or if you do some of the other current. And it looks like we had a development in the past week that we'd be able to drop this down. I'm not sure it's going to be in the mid 40s. 
uh, we were able to. Uh, which was coming. Um, well, let's just say we had a conversation with the uh, some folks that we were able to get this done another way for free. So uh, this will drop to somewhere in the mid 40s, and I'll have a better number for you next week. Okay. It's always a good sign. That is a good sign. Is that 33, 34, 35? Sure. 33 is just about very straightforward. Um, we had a, an article that uh, basically didn't allow the courts to hold meetings if the townhouse was closed uh, for climate weather. Um, the theory behind this was that uh, if the public, even though members of the committee might have had you know, four-wheel drives or the public couldn't come, they couldn't go. Well, now in the, in, the, uh, in light of Zoom meetings, this just adds that if it's a Zoom meeting, it's still holding meeting this only <coughs> <laughs> but the, the looks like the wording is not finalized. In draft, I, no, it's still okay. it's it's still placeholder. All right, yeah. I'll get I, I think okay. you have to use a word different than Zoom because I assume that's a trademark. But yeah, yeah. virtual meetings, yeah, virtual meetings, yeah. 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 Yeah, I'll make that work. But that's the that's the just that's the intent of it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, thirty four is uh, to accept the general law that provides a stipend of a thousand dollars to any clerk who uh, passes a uh, lengthy exam by the Mass Town Clerks Association. Uh, I think it's 250 uh, multiple choice questions. 31% uh, of the clerks in Massachusetts have you know, passed this. I did not, it's the first time I took it. Uh, and it is every uh, kind of arcane bit of knowledge uh, uh, from election laws to birth, death, and marriage rules, to public records, to retention issues, to scanning, to the destruction, to uh, ladies that uh, goes into labor, which is in the, uh, Ambulance on the way to the hospital, the baby is delivered before she gets to the hospital. Where is the birth report? <laughs> All right. I mean, it's in, in some of it, it's, it's, yeah, it's it's that level of minutia, but we deal with that stuff more than you realize. And so, where do. is the birth? Is it the, yeah. the hospital? The answer is it depends. It's where is it pronounced? It could be, it could be the hospital, it could be in the town of Ghost Roots. The people that wrote this stuff should be taken out and flogged. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it just is. So, so, adopting this article that something's going, going to institutionalize. Um, and we adopt it permanently, and it's going to kind of set a standard. This is kind of the standard of the part that we want. So, sure. so, so our successor yep. will um, be incentivized to do the same level of work and knowledge that, that you have, right? But you have to think about it, it's not just about it. You, it's no, I do. Yeah. I, I, I think he does, he didn't finish, right? No, I did. It, it, it just drove me up a wall. Uh, it was just a, well, it's going to happen very soon. Yeah, we hope. Uh, but no, no, I, impact, I have passed. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. The first time I passed, I, I thought okay. I did not have But, you know, look around here. The, uh, um, the clerk in Northboro uh, has passed this. Um, my surrounding towns have not. And frankly, most people don't do it because it's, it's a lot of work. Uh, it just is. Yes. It's a lot of research, a lot of. Um, <coughs> there is a lot of minutia that you deal with. Oh, it is. It's uh, some of it's just funny. Why did it? We know we want to know. It's hundred percent. I I I would be a dull person to watch for party. Let me tell you what. Anyway, that's the intent of it. All right. Thirty five is a little different than the minutes. <clears throat> um, we are, as far as I know, the only town in Massachusetts that makes the clerk the custodian of the minutes. Uh, check that. There are a few towns where the clerk is a custodian of minutes. I I brought that article forward myself because. I remember from my time on when I was on rec years ago, asked for some uh, minutes of private meetings, and they looked at me kind of funny. And the reality is that minutes weren't passed from chair to chair in a lot of boards. So anyway, uh, two things go on here. The state, uh, you know, state open meeting law and state public purpose law. Open meeting law requires that minutes be taken at a certain level of detail at meetings, and that documents used in the meeting be retained, but they don't have to be retained with them. Then you have the Secretary of Public Records laws that talked about. Uh, Minutes have to be kept in perpetuity, agenda fully one year or less of litigation or uh, executive session stuff. So what we've done is to put all this together in one spot. Say, within so many days of the meeting, you have to give to the clerk the minutes and all the doctor's use of the meeting, and we'll store them all. It makes it simple for everybody. It makes it easy for the public to see public records. It works. A couple of things about this that have popped up. We did an audit uh, last fall of all the uh, uh, boards and committee minutes, and uh, I told folks that I was going to have to come to you guys, so it's, it's time to uh, get caught up. So pretty much everybody's in good shape. What we noticed on the audit is that, uh, let's call it a review, but a number of boards did not list documents used in a meeting. Tells me one of three things. Um, either they're using the documents in the meeting and not turn them over to us, 
people are sharing documents ahead of time, which they shouldn't be doing, or another third bad thing. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. So the Attorney General's uh, guidelines require that the minutes include a list of documents used in the meeting. This does a couple of things. It requires you to have a section at the bottom that just says documents used in the meeting. So if it's zero, it's zero, but it draws your attention that, hey, wh why isn't something here? Um, it makes the, um, uh, th this, this uh, bylaw makes it much clearer to read what you need to do, who needs to do, when you need to do. It just clarifies it all. But it adds something new. It adds a requirement. When we talk about documents, we take the physical documents. I think that any information presented at a meeting, whether it's a PowerPoint you printed out or PowerPoint you've shown, is a document used at that meeting and it should be preserved. Right now, they're not. And I think it's irrelevant whether the select board had a PowerPoint presentation or we allowed me to do a PowerPoint presentation. That's a document that should be preserved. And the people that want to go back and look at that app should have a right to do that. So this makes uh, responsibility for the boards to turn that stuff over to us and we'll screw all that as well. So it clarifies it. It uh, adds the blurb on the bottom, which matches up with the AG's office, but it adds that wrinkle that uh, a document, regardless of who presents it at the meeting, is part of the things that should be turned over to us. It creates an obligation on the part of the committees to make sure that you get a copy. Yes, yeah. electronic or yep. well, When I was um, from Lucis for one year, two years, that I was the secretary of the advisory committee, this was the most difficult time in so many thing involved in that job was, you know, the minister prepared and then you had, yeah, you know, someone would show a spread, you know, you know, for advisory, you see the same spreadsheet multiple you know, times. So it's what we have to do, right? Yeah. Um, and I was delightfully the advisor secretary before this was required, so no, I didn't have to do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which I agree. So, so, but there's, by, by the last provision there, more good, good idea. Um, Okay, you've got a section there which says that um, documents can't be provided due to the physical nature of the exhibit, the specific filing location of the document or exhibit can be identified. That seems like help. Uh, well, we actually had that previously, uh, yeah. document physical. You might have uh, something big on an easel, something like that. Sure. Uh, that, that kind of a deal. Okay, um, that's all. Um, so Jim, two questions. Um, did you see the first part of our meeting tonight? You probably didn't, right? You were down in your training. That's right. I did not see it. Uh, we had a um, um, two residents come forward um, during public comment and showed us a video. Is that one that we need to retain? It's not on the agenda. Well, if you allowed it to be shown, it's we a did. document something shared at the meeting. Yeah. I look at that as no different than if you allow them to bring up and have a document physically there, you read it and you discussed it. Yeah, and we did get the copy of that on the thumb drive yeah. to show here, so technically we could call All right, it. that's one. Number two, the one that um, adds a thousand dollars stipend if you pass the test. Um, oh. I didn't hear what you said. Have you passed the test? Yes, yes, <laughs> I did. So I passed it two years, three, two years ago. All right, and so I would say this though: if that test is really that hard, I don't know that a thousand dollars is going to incentivize. I would think the purpose of this is to incentivize our town future town clerks to do it right they they know more but i'm not sure a thousand dollars would do the trick if it's that cumbersome and that um detailed but i guess we could try i, I don't uh, i uh when the time comes that you get a replacement i hope the voters don't elect somebody that wouldn't uh pledge to do this okay. uh, it's uh it's sort of like uh you're either you're either all in or you're not and if you're not all in then we'll find something don't, no. Walmart needs a greeter too. <laughs> My last comment is to to the whole group. I can hear all the whispering. Just so everybody knows, because of the way this uh, the video or the audio set up in this room, this is not like the McAuliffe room where we've got microphones to turn off and on. So I can hear you whispering really well. I can hear Tim Litt does fine sitting in his seat. So it works well, but be careful with the whispering because you're talking over people. It's hard to hear when you're whispering. Um, actually, I have a couple of comments. So having People won't believe this, but I've written a lot of minutes in my life, mm -hmm. and uh, no one ever volunteered to serve on a committee to be the recording secretary. It's a, it's a thankless job, and um, I think we need to investigate tools that can make this task easier and better. One thing I was going to suggest is to have a master template for meeting minutes. 
everyone can use. It would put it in a common format and would make the, the rules clear and might make it slightly easier. Um, you know, personally, I would like to see any meeting that's videotaped, allow the videotape to be the minutes, but I'm sure that the uh, Will and Ishay crew at the state capitol will never agree to that. Um, this is a, uh, a burdensome task that we impose on people who are uncompensated and uh, we need to start thinking seriously about investing investing in tools that make this unpleasant task palatable. Let's go through the uh, uh, section here. When I go to section B here, everything listed in section B, all the details, they're required, that's required by the AG. Oh, I'm not, I'm not complaining. And, with it. and I, I, um, I have had conversations with a couple of attorneys in the AG's office about why they will not allow a transcript of to uh, suffice uh, if we can turn around with the videos of the Zoom or Facebook. And uh, it's an uncomfortable answer and they don't want to answer it. The only thing that I can heard that makes sense is if your meetings, which sometimes run five hours, if somebody mm -hmm. wanted to, to, to look at that, um, you know, they want to get the highlights, they want to look yeah. at the summary. That's the only reason behind it. I, somebody used, uh, um, I, I, what's it, I forget. I can fast forward faster than I can read. Yeah, but what's the term of discovery when you want to uh, flood the other person with uh, nonsensical stuff that, Discovery. <laughs> there you go. Yes, yeah, exactly. So <laughs> some people think that the transcript that's essentially what it is. To, but I, you know, I, I'm with you. Um, we're boiling the ocean. Um, but again, the only things that we're the only thing we're changing on this effectively is um, um, really to add the electronic piece of it and, and, and to put the burden on the clerk's office to, to have to take all this stuff. Um, and then frankly, this thing at the end, uh, the last one I need to add shall include a section labeled documents of the meeting. Well, you're already supposed to do that for the AG's office. I just want to have a blurb that if somebody shows none, why? Why do you have none? I mean, there's a good reason for it, but if the two third committee has had 12 meetings this year and they never had a document, there's something wrong with this picture. You know, that, that's all we're looking to do. It's pretty easy to do. I do like it here at the template. I've seen some some other towns. Um, I'll look into that. Okay. It's a good idea. And just uh, some, some background. I don't know if it was last year or the year before that. There was a proposal before the select board about a discussion about which boards should get recording secretary so that a volunteer yeah. wouldn't need to and there was kind of a oh yeah there was a whole debate about it so but i mean maybe the next time we consider that you know i get your point which is it's very helpful to people who are volunteering where to offer them a, uh, and you know secretary. andrew the conclusion was elected boards uh, which excludes a lot and it but we added up the money it was a ton of money that would be spent on um, providing paid minute takers. I mean, it was a lot to every single committee. So that's why we decided not to do it. But um, the other thing we should do in conjunction with Al's idea, which I like having the um, um, formatted minutes um, that everybody uses is, you know, training on taking minutes. You don't, you know, minutes are not supposed to be transcripts either. And so, you know, if you can get people that really understand what should go in minutes, that probably would um, make them a little bit more efficient also. Yeah, small point for the template. Um, I would suggest uh, recommending line numbers on the minutes. That's one click in Word. A lot of people don't know it's there, but very easy to do. It saves a lot of time when you're discussing the minutes, certainly. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I will I will point out, and um, and I do think the line numbers actually are a good idea. Oh, but they're great. Mr. Ham Mr. Hamilton's point, um, doing the minutes is a bit of an art form. Um, you know, Absolutely. we've had, um, in the time that I've been here, we've had a number of people who've done the minutes for the board. Some people have not done them very well. Um, I think I actually had a, um, one board tell me, you know, we appreciate you trying to do the minutes, but please don't. <laughs> um, so I'll put myself in that group. But we've had some people who do, who do minutes really well. You know, Bridget does a great job with these, with these minutes. And again, as you know, five hour meeting, you know, seven, eight, nine pages worth of minutes and everything. And, and the board has two corrections. Uh, you know, type of thing. So some people do them very well, and but it's hard to find those people. And again, you you know the old adage: you get to what you pay for. No, but for the boards that uh, I'm not sure the right word here. I don't want to say perfunctory, but boards that meet infrequently and have uh, non-controversial uh, agenda. So board of registrars boards meet two or three times a year. I actually prefer that I I um, produce the draft minutes. Before the meeting, 
and actually bring it and hand it to the people and we fill in the blanks and we actually vote the minutes at that meeting. So um, that can be done too. So it's about to close. Exactly. Well, you don't meet for 45 days. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So but anyway, at the end of the day, I know this sounds like a pain in the neck. Um, and it is. Um, it's done this myself. But at the end of the day, this saves time um, for the boards themselves, retention of the records, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, and it makes, it provides a much uh, clearer picture to the public of what's going on. So, um, are they right? You know, any other questions for, for Jim? No. All oh, right. I have one. I have just one on Article 15, where it says to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer from any available funds, a sum of money for the purpose of paying to, get, to scan town clerk documents or do anything. Blah, blah, blah. Now, um, you had mentioned before that some of these town clerk documents are things from 1777. Um, yeah. I'm just wondering if it would um, be a good idea to sort of mention for people who haven't heard that before, sure. that the, the, the dates of the, the, the amount of time that these documents, it's not like 1985. In summary, like, we can address in the, sub, yeah, in the yeah. summary. Oh, I'll put a little verb together on that, but I guess it's um, just, I think another rabbit hole on that because you didn't know I could talk about Canada for fish flying. Um, we have an incredible amount of stuff that we've scanned. We've scanned, uh, I think, 55 or 60,000 pages of documents went out for free to the Massachusetts uh, Digital uh, Commonwealth Project, and they've committed to do an equivalent number moving forward. We have multiple tens of thousands of documents that have been scanned in the past through CPC monies back before they changed the rules. We have tens of thousands of documents that have been scanned by seniors working on tax write-off. And then we have uh, these documents that are going up that by their nature, we can't do ourselves inside the size, but because the condition doesn't warrant spending CPC money on it to do it. Um, and then finally, we have a project through the CPC to have documents that have need a lot of attention to go up. It's a minimal number of them. Uh, go from that. Um, and then above and beyond that, we have, uh, over the past five years, we're getting the finish line of scanning all of our closed uh, CONCOM planning and ZBA documents in archival PDFs. And when we do our third check of this, this summer, we'll be able to get rid of, I think it's either 32 or 35 baggage boxes full of documents in the basement. And that's all stuff that we can search to try to find things as well. So all this is kind of coming critical together. And then our, the archivists that we want to uh, continue to use for the stuff to make all these records that are scanned searchable because if you preserve them and scan them and stick them in a room, yeah, that's not really good. So this is all sort of a part of a museum. OCR scan them. Yes, OCR into archival PDFs. That's the standard so that yeah. 20 years from now you'll be able to open up the fonts and so forth inside of it. Yeah. So I think another thing that I'm, I'm realizing is uh, the ball is on our card. This is something where, you know, we just got to make a decision about the part of the request that you made for, and I, the reason we've held it just part of the whole yep. overall budget picture, anything that's really involved in like numbers spending, you know, we've been holding it really towards the end. Um, uh, so we can make a global determination. So I've got one more question, Jim, about the article with the um, 56K or 40, whatever it is now. Jim, you have not included, so the 26K for the archivist in your budget is on top of that, correct? Yes, that's in uh, miscellaneous contracting services. Okay, Andrew Pfaff just texted me that question, so I want to make sure I got that answered. So he just want to make sure you're not double counting. So 26K is separate from the 40-something. Yes, separate. This is this is strictly stuff that we sent out, out outside to be scanned uh, because of the unique uh, nature of the physical documents themselves. Okay. So use a different vendor for the twenty six than this. The twenty six is actually uh, going to a person. That's a that's a young guy, um, Andrew, that Jim's been using for the last couple of years from um, Simmons. Um, that's yeah. been okay. real, real... yeah, and he's the one that's taking this and putting up into this uh, website. We have Owen seven seven two history All right. So it's kind of tying all this together. But again, that number that you talked at, uh, we can get that down to the mid 40s. I'll know by Monday uh, a good number on that. So we're going to save some money on that. Okay. Good. All right, thanks. Thank you.
Right. Thank Thank thanks very much. And Mark, I'll get you the final language right. tomorrow. Sure. Yep. Now, I'll add one thing for the to think about for tools for minute takers. Um, you know, the, the technology you see on Zoom that does uh, speech to text is also available as standalone services. So for the non-virtual non meetings, uh, I know a number of people will record the meeting and then go back through it. If there was, if they had the ability to take a recording of the meeting, turn it into text, then it becomes cutting out the extraneous stuff and not, you know, trying to hunt through for the words of emotion. Um, those services, I don't think, are astoundingly expensive, but it's something you might want to look into as an option. Likely to be cheaper than hiring a person to sit through the meeting and then do that work. Okay. Um, all right. Thanks. Thank you. Jim. So I think um, that's all the guests that we invited for tonight. So, yep. Um, maybe one thing we could do, I'd like to take a break soon, but um, a five minute recess. But um, is there any reason why we shouldn't authorize the ZBA? Or it's Article 30 to authorize it uh, to send it to the planning board. I had one short on that one. Uh, there's language in there that says the extension shall be granted, blah, blah, blah. I think that should be the extension may be granted because there is a condition here. Okay, okay so okay. Just, just to be clear for our two ZBA um, alums here, um, there's no current um, expiration of a special permit. Is that the case? I think that's the case. I think that's the case, too. But I'm not 100% positive. I'd go back and look. All right, so we're trying to correct something that probably should have been there all along. Yeah. Um, how about this? We'll just take a five minute recess. We'll look it and then we'll okay. come back and we'll. That sound good? Yeah. Perfect. All right. Yeah. Ready to okay, Kathy, I think you're still muted. Video off. Video off and muted. There we go. Oops. There she is. Okay. So during the break, uh, Sam and I both checked and know the provision that the general provision about uh, a time limit on special permits is, is not there. So, um, I think Sam makes a good point that the word shall should be may, but you know the purpose of this vote is just to get the process going so it goes to the planning board so they can begin their public hearings and keep it on track to, to have it on the board. So I'm in favor of um, voting to send it to the planning board with the recommendation that shall be changed to may. Me too. Okay. okay. So they they actually put it on the warrant. Yeah, because it's a zoning bylaw change. Okay. Right. Are they you mean planning board? Yeah. Yes. And do they do they know what's coming? Yes. Okay. Okay. So um, I move that the select board authorize the um, say double. I move that the um, select board send the ZBA article providing for our extension of special permits. We sent it to the planning board with a, a recommendation that the word shall in the, in the current draft be changed to me. Second. Uh, we need to do a roll call because uh, yes, you have her remote. All right. Uh, Kathy? Aye. Um, Cybers? Aye. Landry? Aye. And Hamilton? Aye. All right. And I'm aye. Okay. Um, do you want to start to vote on, on some of these articles? It'll just only save us time down the road. Um, of, of the um, list that I gave at the beginning of the meeting, I can review it again. Are there any that kind of like spit out to people of we should talk about them? Yeah. All right. So maybe I'll just go through the ones that are the most, it should be the most non controversial. One, two, three, 
nine, ten, eleven, thirteen, actually sixteen. I do I do have something I want to say. So uh and twenty-seven. How about those to start? Yep. What are you going to say about 16? Okay, 16. Um, what I did was I compared it to the last year's town warrant. And the last year's town warrant, the amount was 100,000. So right. now it's 100. They've added, so they, 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 they added the 50 for South Union to that. Correct. So that was the discussion, and, and Ms. Cook is correct. That's the discussion from the yep. Saturday okay. meeting. Yep. Yep. With, if we maintained and kept South Union, there was some work that needed to be done. I think Mr. Hamilton may have suggested that instead of having it as a separate article, putting in capital, add it into the capital uh, the uh, maintenance article on the facilities manager so that. Thank you. Yeah, All right. Okay. Is that enough? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. So, so I'll, add, I'll add 16 back to it. Um, before we go on, where is the revolving fund on that article? Is that not well? It's in eight, it's in eighteen. Okay, I had a we, question about sure. That. We should. Okay, it otherwise would be straightforward, except that um, you know, we need to take out the, the item about that. Right. So I had so I had you know in conversations with Mr. Davis, I removed that so that. And and the new the language will look similar to the article for the facilities maintenance fund article. So this should be an easy road to mess. Okay, and the revolving fund one. I thought what I saw was that the golf still at seventy five. I thought we talked about maybe the capital. So I don't think uh, so. It's funny. I've, I've been going back and forth with CPC. We currently have about ninety thousand dollars, roughly ninety thousand. Yeah. I'm in that fund right now. Um, when the new season starts before June 30th, we'll probably get about another 17,000. The board had committed to doing $60,000 worth of work, which was yeah. some paving of the cart path, improving irrigation with sure. the fairway. And um, I'd suggest other bunker work. Yeah. So that was about 60. What so, yeah, I, I, like I said, I don't see that you're going to have an issue with that in the coming year because best case scenario, you're probably going to go into the year with about $47,000, say, you know, uh, go into fiscal 25 with about 47. Maybe you're going to get yourself maybe back up around 90. Okay. Um, I, I don't think that there is anything on the docket that's going to exceed that 75. It's fine if you want to increase it, but, but if we, you get up to 90, then it's over the seven thousand. It is, but I don't think there's any project that you intend to spend everything. No, but so we, we wouldn't have to vote. Like, you know, we voted twice to exceed it, right, this year. We had to vote it twice separately um, to exceed what town meeting um, proposed. So I'm okay with 90. I, I don't want to vote on that one tonight, though, Andrew. We, we need to, t those numbers need to be massaged a little bit. So we're not oh, voting. I, wasn't, I, wasn't on my list. I just want to be sure that wasn't intended. So. Sure. sure. I mean, I, I don't think, you know, for for. There's no issue with moving it up. Okay, how about this? I'll just go through this list again. Okay, right. One, two, three, nine, ten, eleven, thirteen, sixteen, and twenty-seven. Yep. So I moved the we the board and vote to support those articles of coming. Second. Uh, Kathy? Um, yeah, yay. Okay. <laughs> aye, sorry. Aye. That's not what I was doing. Aye, aye, aye. I support. Aye, aye. Yes. <laughs> we know what you mean. Okay. Right. Cyrus? Yes. Aye. And Milton? Aye. Okay. We got those out of the way. So that's nine articles. Uh, yes. Okay, uh, that's so, a good day's work. So then do you, should we next talk about the ones that we just heard about tonight from the sponsors? Yes. Sure. All right. Um, okay, so the rec articles. Um, 14 is uh, reauthorizing one black 
engineering funds for construction of dog funding. Are we ready to vote on that one? Yes. Okay. Um, I move that the board vote to support Article 14 at town meeting. Second. Uh, Cook. Aye. Hamilton. Aye. Travers. Aye. Lindsay. Aye. Hamilton. Aye. Okay. And for the 17. Well, mm -hmm. for 16, for 17. Do we want no. 15? Well, I'm 16. I'm oh, sorry, I'm getting a little mixed up here. 17 uh, is the other red one. Yes, yeah, 17 and 18 are the other red ones, but because it's not a revolving fund, 18 is not going to be a red one. Yes. So and that's just has to be 18, removed. leave alone. That's all the revolving funds. Yes. So yeah. 17 and 1. Yeah, but so, but let's get the language fixed. Yes. Yes, okay. it's not a revolving fund. <laughs> right. well, absolutely, that's an important yep. change. Um, okay, what about 44, the um, exemption? 42? Oh, no, no, 44, the, uh, I'm moving ahead to the possibility. Oh, right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, any questions about that? Reason why we won't vote on that tonight? Nope. Okay, I move to the board support at town meeting article 44. Second. All, um, Cook? Aye. Uh, Bennington? Aye. Cyrus? Uh, no. Landry? Aye. Hamilton? Aye. Okay. And then next, uh, Mr. Hagerty's articles begins with 15. 15 we can't vote on yet. Yeah, so we did 34. Uh, absolutely. We could do, let's look at 33 again with that. Yes. 15, we can't vote on because the number's not we don't set. Have the, we don't have the 33, we don't have the language on yet. Right? That's 34. 34 we do. Okay. Um, we're ready to vote on that one. Um, no objections? Okay. Um, I move the board support at town meeting article 34. Second. Um, Cook? Aye. Thanks. Aye. Stivers, aye. Landry, aye. Hamilton, aye. We're getting this down. And um, 35 is the, is the meeting minutes article. Any reason not to vote on it tonight? Okay, I move that the board support it. Town meeting article 35. Second. Cook? Aye. Dennington, aye. Snyder's aye. Landry, aye. Hamilton, aye. All right, and then the tricentennial. All right, so we can vote on at least one of them, right? Article 37. Established, yeah. Yes. Um, I move to the board support of town meeting article 37. Second. Hook? Aye. Thanks. Aye. Stipers, aye. 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 And held an aye. Okay, it's a progress. So I think it's 13, Mark, in total. The... One, two, three, nine, 10, 11, 13, 16, 27, 44, 34, 35, 37. You should call bingo. Yeah, I got it. Did we not do 36? We did not. Nope. Um, let me take another look at it. Oh, that was on your list. That was the- um... 32 and 36. Oh yes, 36. 36. Um, so this is the- Pension obligation. Yeah, pension obligation. And it's already been cleared. As Brian Valentine explained the last meeting, bond council has reviewed this and yep. this good. Right. They also have the motion prepared. And again, this is, you know, they wouldn't advise us doing this now based on the climate, but this is a tool for the toolbox. So when the yep. time is right, the board can take, you know, the board can act on it. And it's going to take a while. Probably. And Marcus, but, is the whole reason that they advise not to act on it now is interest rates? Yeah. It doesn't save us money now. It's right. But a year ago, Yep. Good. All right. I move that the board support that town meeting article 36. Second. Cook? Aye. Bennington? Aye. Stivers? Aye. Landry? Aye. Hamilton? Aye. Perfect. We got that one not okay. too. How are we leaving 32 alone? Yeah, yeah. 32. Perhaps we just we, we refer that did. back to. Uh, to yeah, because yeah, that's like a change. Okay, so we don't have we to. Just that. Okay. Thanks. 
Uh, Andrew, what about 31, um, the downtown district um, that? Oh, yeah. Well, that seems pretty straightforward. Yeah. Yeah. I'm bored. Okay. Thank you. Do you have any issues with it? Or... No. Right. I mean, it says truly adding a word, you know, the same word all the way through. I move that the board support a town meeting article 31. Second. Okay. Aye. Lennington High for starters, aye. Lendry, aye. Alton, aye. Okay, so then should we next turn to um, Public Works Planning Board Articles 28 and 29. Sam, do you have any from the overview comments? I mean, this is the I think this is just the two-step process. One is to amend the special act in 1991 and create the public works advisory committee, which I think are worthy steps. I move that the board, let's do it in two steps here. So I move that the board support a town meeting article 28. Second. Uh, Cook. Aye. Bennington, aye. Fibers, I. Hamilton, I. Article 29 is the replacement, right? Yes. Yes. Advisory okay. I propose that at the end, we insert a provision that would have a, a sunset provision so that, you know, unless reauthorized by town meeting, uh, you know, within 10 years after the establishment of this committee, the, the committee is this thing. And that's not intended to stop it. It's just that from the experience we had with the last public works planning board, where it became clear um, into it that this isn't really working well or it's a committee we'd like to, to get rid of. Um, it's harder to get committees, get rid of committees uh, after you establish them than you think. So, yeah. what do people think of that idea? I like it. Mr. Blood has made the comment that we should do it more globally, which I think makes sense. And we don't have that option now. So, yeah, but Andrew's right. This one has been so difficult to deal with for how long now? Um, I mean, look what has happened. Look at all the meetings, look at all of the animosity, look at all the things that got said. So I'm supporting that just because of what this committee is, not because um, um, I really wish we could do it for all or none, but this is a unique one. So I'll support it. I think the idea that should be done, there's no way we would tonight say, okay, let's yeah. have a, you would need yeah. to be very individual. A lot of committees are working well. They'd be kind of defended at this. Yeah. You, um, you just need, would need to do it um, on a committee by committee basis. Yeah. yeah. However, well, having oh, said oh. that, I haven't finished reading this one. I'm not ready to vote on this one. Also, I, I've got to abstain if we're going to vote um, because I really haven't read it enough to really have it sink in. I think it looks great, but I really want to read it again before I vote on it. All right. Um, the old, and then in the next draft, are you the owner of this article at the select board session? Okay. <laughs> Everyone seems on board with the idea of. Uh, the 10 year sunset plus. So oh, I know 10 years after. Um, seems like everyone on board is on board, but 10. Yep. So, so I'm not, a, I'm not on board with putting a sunset clause on this. And I think what, what you're doing is you're reading into the problems with the past board that were imposed upon us by the state that where the state made it impossible for the town to take any corrective action into a new committee, which is really no different from many of the other you know, standing committees that, that the town has. If a problem develops, then we have the option you know, to go to town meeting, make a change, just as we would do for the technology committee, the trails committee, um, you know, any number of, of, of other committees. I think there is some merit to you know putting sunset clauses you know uh, on committees where uh, we think that 
you know, the need for them may um, disappear. I don't think this is one. I think we're going to have, you know, a DPW for the next 50 years. I don't think we're going to stop having roads. I don't think we're going to stop having trees or cemeteries or water. And I don't think we're going to be in a position where we don't want public input on how that works. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, the uh, language is going to stand up for 50 years, but town meeting can change it. You know, any town meeting can, can change it. Um, I think you're getting, um, you know, I think you're reacting to a problem that we had based on a, on a state imposed structure that doesn't apply here. I do think, you know, if you want to have, um, you know, sunset clauses, I think it's reasonable to let's say that the select board is going to have a look at, you know, all of the standing committees and make a recommendation, you know, at some point to put sunset clauses on those where you think it, you know, it makes sense. This language, you know, has been stable since July or August. It's been around, you know, many places in the town. And my recommendation is, unless you see a functional problem with it, let's let this one go through. And if you want to add a sunset clause at the next town meeting, having thought about it, okay. But I strongly think that's the wrong thing to do here. I, I remain unconvinced. Uh, and so what we'll do is we'll just put, put this in and then at the next meeting, then we'll vote on the whole thing. I mean, I think it would be so easy where the committee does a good job and then someone at, you can always get rid of this, right? But um, this is an occasion where you have to, it's good to kind of justify your existence every now and then as a committee. This is what we've done. This is why we're doing a, a good job. And then, this works, then we can do with other boards, and then also maybe even, you know, post town meeting, looking ahead to the next fall town meeting. You know, where I'd like to think we will have a fall town meeting this year. Mm -hmm. You know, we can make progress on that. It would be it's going to be controversial, but a little committee looks at here's a list of five committees where we might propose just getting rid of. But do you want to add, you know, something that's going to be controversial to something that that you know we need to replace as a result of getting rid of the public works planning board? I, I, I think it's a yeah. okay. It's a I mistake. Don't, Tim, I don't know that it'd be controversial. However, what you said convinced me. So um, I agree with what you said. I really hadn't thought about it that way. I don't want to do this next year. Either we're going to add it now or we're not. Um, I don't want to bring this up again next year. Um, but um, is anybody going to remember in 10 years that this needs to be done? Um, I don't know. Yeah. If you're the chair of the committee. Yeah. Yeah, part of the committee. yeah, if you're doing your job and you're the chair of this committee, but to Tim's point as well, and again, if uh, you know, it is also just as easy to uh, go back to town meeting if the committee is working well, yeah. eight or nine years down the road, and say let's extend the life of this, as as it is to go back to town meeting and say this committee isn't working, so let's get rid of it. So either way, you're you're raising the same issue, effectively different sides. Of the yes, issue. but this one, in this case, you're 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 putting on the record that you expect it to fail. No, 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 not at all. I well, so. I, I don't know that, but it's more likely than not that it's not going to fail. How about that? So I still think that Tim's got the better argument, maybe between Sam and Tim on this one. Um, Sam, Sam's like, Sam, are you supporting putting the sunset on it? I, I guess I'm not enthusiastic about it, but I don't object to it. All right, Andrew. That, okay, so so it's an argument think, between Sam and or between um, Andrew and Tim. So I don't, um, I don't think that this makes it more or less likely to kind of I don't either. I don't think it'll be a big deal at town meeting either way. I'm just thinking about that administrative <laughs> headache down the road, the 10 years when you got to remember to do this. We've missed some appointments. Um they get missed. Um so anyway. Well the the, uh, the argument that Tim is making might be better framed if we made the sunset in five years and then it was working well, you know, it's, it's simply uh, where everybody is happy with how it's working, then it can either be permanent or extend the sunset for 20 years or what likes. I, I think the idea of a sunset is actually admirable because it does force us on a semi-regular basis 
to ask whether this is really what we want. You know, we have boards and committees in town that take on a life of their own and, and operate as uh, essentially fiefdoms. fiefdoms. And um, yes. And I, I think the fact, you know, having to go back to town meeting on a regular, not on a regular periodic basis, basis. A periodic basis to justify what you've done is, is, is a healthy thing. And, I agree um, if we do them for all. I just don't think we should pick on one. We were told, Al, two years ago by a consultant that Select Board had hired to help us set goals that we have way too many committees here. And we've made no progress with that. So I'm all for the full review of all of them. And, you know, so we want to start to make some progress. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I can imagine that if we uh, went to town meeting in the fall with a long list of committees that were going to be sunsetted, um, the boiling vat of tar and feathers would be uh, regular right there next to the rails on which we would be ridden out of town. Um, and so I, I think. Not if you did them all and you looked at them all, not, not if you picked on one or two, but if you did them all, I don't know that that would be the case. Well, then, oh. but here's the, here's <laughs> the, here's the, I will point out though, board member just here to say that this committee, the, the committee this is replacing was in existence for how many years? 32. 32. The Public Works Planning Board? 33. Yes. And during the whole time, as I understand it, it was not clear what its mandate was, nor did it function particularly well. Um, and yet it managed to cobble along for 33 years. And I had experience with it on both sides of the fence and it wasn't a happy experience. I found that it was a fairly dysfunctional group. So I'm saying, I'm still not sure what this committee is supposed to be doing. And I would like to see before it becomes a permanent fixture in town for another 30 years. So so I think that's something that kind of supports the idea of the other side of yes. So I don't think we need to spend a ton of this is something we can debate endlessly, but I'll say this. I support the article, whether it's in there or not. And then I would hope that is there anyone on the board that's you have different views on this, but you're not going to support it if you don't get what exactly what you want in the sunset provision in here. No. All right. So then maybe we just vote on that part tonight so that we don't have to. I think we're just going to have the same discussion, you know, at the next meeting we're having tonight. Yeah. Um, you know, I think to, to your point, Tim, is it's different on kind of this side of things where there's a political part of it where, you know, where, where a committee becomes kind of a fiefdom, you know, uh, and you think that the, the committee should, really serious consideration should be given to just getting rid of it. That's going to spark a whole, uh, you know, discussion, which is a little bit you need to summon some kind of courage to do that, where if you have an automatic expiration date, the burden then shifts to the committee. Well, you have to come to the whole town meeting and just, it's a pretty basic showing that we're adding value to, to the board. And I do not agree with you that saying we um, expect the committee to fail. Um, that's the message I get. But the, the last thing I will point out is, is that the first, the first bit of this article actually eliminates the solid waste disposal committee, which has been hanging around doing nothing for a while. So I mean, it is actually possible to go to town meeting and get rid of something. And we're doing it. Took a long time to small check mark. Yeah. You didn't ask me. <laughs> I right. didn't know it was one. So, okay, so well, I think the, the other thing I think maybe we ought to be semi on record for is if we are called on to form new theoretically permanent committees that we, as a general rule, had a sunset because it started. We sunset. have done that. Yeah. yeah. Well, how about for every one new, we have to get rid of two? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so it sounds like you have three or, or four the sunset, and Sam and I are wavering. If I hear what everybody said, so, um, you know, yeah. add it. All right. So do we need to take a vote on it, or we're just, okay, I, I move that 
um, we add a sunset provision to the draft of um, Article 29. Make it 10 years. Sunset. Yeah, a 10 year sunset provision. Second. Second. Okay. Um, all those in favor of Dennington, aye. Fibers, aye. Landry, aye. Hamilton, aye. Cook. Cook, nay. Okay. I'm going to support the article. I'm just not supporting that. So, so that's going to be added. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, formal. So we'll put that in the in the next draft, and then everyone will have the opportunity. You know, everyone will have read it and ready to vote on at the next meeting. Yeah. Okay. I think it usually takes at least two meetings for something that's not. Uh, but by the way, I hope you don't take you know a split vote about that. That is any, um, it's been a great value though. We have to be put into prepare that tonight. It's been supported by the board, and will be an important step forward. Yes, and you can always move to strike the language on the floor. If now you think that that might be okay. and then I'll we'll just live with whatever town meeting. Yep, yeah. uh, okay. The, the other that I thought we could vote on is citizens petitions at 30 uh, Mr. Palmer citizens petitions, which they are non-binding articles that um, ask town meeting to restrict on some time basis um, when we can consider leasing, disposing of 21 pilot stream. No. And I spoke to, spoke to the sponsor and he said, um, he would withdraw these articles because we have created the future use committee and we've got some appointments um, that we're going to be making tonight. So, uh, 45, 46, yes, 46. and I think the last time we talked about this, we asked, we wanted town council's view on whether someone who submits a citizen petition can just withdraw it and you take it off the article. I talked to Jay about that and it's, it looks like there is not a in the law you know, absolutely crystal clear um, answer to the question, but his advice is the more prudent kind of conservative thing to do is you know, no, you know, take yeah. something off yeah, because other people sign the uh, the citizens petition. So Mr. Yeah. Palmer, you choose not to speak to a town meeting. Exactly, he, he he not even put a motion on the floor. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so I move that uh, we vote. Um, I'll frame it as a motion. I move that the board, the board, support articles 40, 45, 46, and 47, 45, 46 and 47 at town meeting. Second. Okay. Dennington, no. Stivers, no. Landry, no. Hamilton, no. Cook, no. Okay. And then articles 48 and 49 from um, Mrs. Spanish, you know, another way of accomplishing the same thing that it looks like um, is proposed in these articles is you would just hold the police budget and then and the benefits budget and, in, and propose increasing on the floor mm -hmm. the same amounts, right? Um, um, I'm not proposing we vote on these. As tonight. I understand it right now, the police budget covers the cost for dispatchers, and I assume the benefit package fund does as well. Yes. So that if we pass that budget, yep. then these are effectively become moved. Yeah. Yep. Okay. But I think I think it's highly unlikely that advisory is going to support that budget, or I don't know that we've got the votes to support either. He's got three budgets anyway. Which one are you talking about? Um, so I agree. We wait. Um, we're going to have the meetings advisory on the 13th, which will tell us a whole lot as far as where the budget's going, as far as that department goes. I think that's where a lot of the discussion is going to be had that night. Okay, so I think, have we accomplished all that we can accomplish tonight in terms of voting on articles? And then Mark, you'll, put the, you'll keep the, the spreadsheet. I know the numbering is going to change now. Um, but uh, yeah. this will focus our, the, the focus from the rest of here is yeah. going to be. 16. Yes, yeah, so I'll begin to put together the Excel sheet. 
yeah, my cheat sheet um, so that you can start to track some of these. Okay. So Mark, I'm and just then, trying to help you. There's 19 in total. Um, there's one, number 28 is 401 as far as the vote goes. Every other one is 50 other than 45 through 47, which was 05. Right. 44 was 41. Well, our, yeah. Um, no, it wasn't. There was an abstention. Oh, yes, it was. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. I'm sorry. That's Sam voted against that one. I'm sorry. Thanks, Jim. That's right. Yes. He's right. Okay. One small point on the, the front end of this stuff, there's a um, talking about the format or the motions. It says previous question in here on page nine of mine. Looks to me like it should be called calling the question. But it says previous question and says to call or move the question, request stop discussion as far as two thirds vote. Mm -hmm. So just the town meeting time is to move the previous question. It's been that way for years. Move the previous question? So yes. anyway, I found that confusing. So yeah, somebody might take a look. The, yeah, the moderator took a, I, I think he took a review through a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, and have him take another review. I I I say that may be right in terms of town meeting time, but I just found that confusing. Uh, lots of things about the way town meeting works are confusing. I mean, I think the historical piece at the end of every article, or do or act, yes, yes. anything in relation there too. I, I like it. it well, it's it's different. Yes. Anyway. Okay. Do we want to change typo? I think typo. All right. Or we just to make emotions. Well, I think for typo things like this, why don't we, we just still have clean up words? Yeah, yeah, just send yeah, it directly right. to um, parts of the message. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, I propose that we just now move on to um, reports. That sound good? Yes. Yeah, I'll give a quick report on. I attended the Massachusetts Municipal Association annual meeting um, last Friday, mm -hmm. yes. um, together with Mark and Vanessa and um, Pauline Stanfield was also there. I don't think so. Um, so I can just say, I don't know, Sam, have you been to the meeting before? I've been several times, yeah. Okay, so this is my first time going. Interesting. Um, no. At first, there was an opening uh, speech by uh, the governor and the lieutenant governor, um, which is a you know, tradition of the meeting, mm -hmm. right? So um, the one thing I found interesting was that um, there is a it's called the Municipal Empowerment Act, yes. Act yeah. which has been introduced uh, in the legislature. And it looks like, you know, Lieutenant Governor Crystal was, I think, the mayor of Thank Salem you. and is, you know, really in tune with uh, municipalities. Sounds like it's like a long list of kind of little, like, technical things that, corrections to things that will Annoying towns. Um, <laughs> some of them are kind of such <laughs> and and what, One of the well, one of them is to um, give towns more flexibility in terms of procurement. You know, upping the level at which you can, uh, you know, uh, enter into a contract without having to get multiple bids, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then, um, Mark, do you have on on the prognosis about state aid? Um, Sounded pretty good, right? So it sounded great, but when the preliminary cherry sheets came out, um, our unrestricted general government aid and, and, and the other major categories, the preliminary cherry sheet had us increasing about $50,000 over last year. And then when you flipped it over and looked at the charges against on the back, <laughs> it went up about 20000 So we netted about $30,000 over fiscal 24. Okay, so that is just, So it sat, so I understand, in the room, there was a lot of clapping. Everybody was, you know, really happy. And then when you actually, when it, you know, and I always am, uh, I was talking with um, Sean Cronin from the Department of Revenue Division of Local, Local Services, and and uh, he said, I think you're going to be really happy. And I said, you know, I'll wait till I see the paper because, oh, you know, it, it's, Mark, it's not. Mark, so was he talking yes. to you specifically or Jillian? Because it's it's supposed to be three something. That's one percent. We got inflation that was three point one. We've got a budget going up, you know, five percent. So how are we supposed to be happy with that? 
Well, I, I think the com I, I think the comment had more to do with um, as as Mr. Dennington had said the Municipal Empowerment Act. So some of the potential benefits coming in that, but the cherry sheet numbers really didn't do anything to wow us, and really it gave us about what we normally get anyway. As to the school transportation stuff, that looked like we were going to do better on some of those things. It did, and, and and again, the problem is we have town meeting pretty early, so the governor sets. The, the floor, not the ceiling. Usually the House will, you know, and, and sometimes the House and the Senate will get together and do something jointly and say, this is where we're going to be. Usually it's the Senate. If they don't, it's usually the Senate at the end that tries to do just that little bit better. So. Um, but this is all we're going to have for town meeting. Yes. Yeah. All right. So the other quick um, things I... I'm not worthy about the meeting. You know, there's a trade show afterwards. So um, it's for people that have been to the meeting many times. It's like just going to a conference that you go to every year. And, you know, but for me, the first time, um, I had a good conversation with someone at the booth from um, Massachusetts Housing Partnership and a good conversation with her about our affordable housing trust fund committee. One view she offered was, you know, seeing how these committees are staffed in different towns across the state. But the way we have it where it's basically controlled by the select boards, in her view, not a very good structure because um, selectmen tend to be torn in many different directions and that having a committee which is really just focused just on that is a benefit. So I think that's pertinent to you know, the goal we have of maybe reorganizing that committee and, and work, how it interacts with shop for at Fulton. Um, and another thing that was kind of funny is I walked into the hall and, you know, you have that sense of where you want to be friendly, but not too friendly because everyone in the booth, they want to talk to you. And so you But right when I turned in, looked to the left, there was a very nice young woman who um, was an arborist. And was, you know, basically, does your prop town have problems with trees or the structure of how you deal with trees? So I talked to her for about half an hour and I thought she was really informed and definitely took her card for, you know, she mentioned, I mentioned that we were, you know, probably making changes to how we staff and structure the tree boarding position. And you know, she mentioned that her um, company with some municipalities will do a deal where like, you know, they have this company on about like a $5,000 retainer. And then, you know, for that amount of money, they're just on call. So look at a particular tree when necessary, give you advice about um, other parts of the tree bylaw and regulations and things like that. And then if services are good, you periodically re up the retainer, et cetera. So that gave me some ideas. Um, Al, uh, do you have the, the next two um, numbers? For sure. Us? I give uh, a quick update on Atwood. We're still waiting for the engineering firm to take samples. Uh, as of last week, they hadn't been able to get into the lot and conditions weren't right. Um, I think probably in the next week or two, we'll make a decision on the article on uh, town meeting. I'll probably convene a, a meeting of the uh, Affordable Housing Trust Fund only because we've also got minutes, which we now have to do. Um, I did spend some time looking for alternative sites of town-owned land and uh, thought I had found one and then found out that I had not. Um, it turns out that any time that we turn property over to the care and custody of the Conservation Commission, it is essentially a one-way Right. ticket to never being touched again. So um, I think we want, if we have opportunities to do that in the future, I think we should do it judicially. Um, and I have my eye on one other site and I think we may end up having to um, do a rethink on, on, on some of this, including, you know, we may have to go out and actually acquire property. My, my personal feeling is that, you know, we have a housing crisis. And the only way you solve a housing crisis is by expanding the stock of housing. Um, and that otherwise, we're just uh, shuffling deck chairs on the Titanic. But I'm open to alternative ideas. So that's my report. I think your next is uh, 
Yes, yes. Um, and I, I fully expect um, uh, Mr. Hamilton or Mr. Stivers or both to, to jump in. Um, so the, uh, as the board remembers, uh, Westboro um, uh, establishing uh, in the, uh, the Metro West um, uh, REC, uh, Regional Emergency Communication Center, um, the location um, was the uh, Hopewell Pond site, uh, which is the old Superfund site. And um, the um, select board in Westboro last week um, considered um, using a new site. Uh, and they um, agreed that uh, they would use the old Harvey building um, uh, site, which is located downtown. It's about a 0.6 acre site. Um, old school building, historic school building. Uh, it's actually, it's a nice property. Um, it's near the fire station and the library. So it's, it's very centrally located uh, to their um, existing public safety. Um, I had a brief conversation with the town manager, Westboro town manager um, yesterday and um, very willing to, uh, you know, take us on a tour of the property. And um, you know, should we be interested to you know to engage in those discussions um, and and talk about you know whether or not you know there may be a path forward for us um, you know um, in in the Metro West Rank um, at that location. So that is, I think, um, you know, that was one of the items, one of the significant items. I think that um, the, the board did not feel comfortable moving forward with the IMA last time. Uh, and that issue appears to be in the rear view mirror. So, um, you know, I, I believe that is something that probably we need to, uh, at least with um, uh, Mr. Skyvers, Mr. Hamilton, myself, the, the chiefs uh, need to have a conversation as to whether we want to explore this and see whether or not this provides a, an option for us. Uh, I, I, I think there's no question we should do it. I would recommend that you also uh, contact your counterpart in Grafton since uh, the REC is in fact you know an independent entity governed by the town administrators slash managers of those two mm -hmm. respective towns. But I think there's absolutely no reason why we shouldn't do it. Uh, understand what they're doing and um, you know that they have removed a significant barrier. And we ought to find out everything we can and. Tell them that we are that we are more than interested in committing to a wreck. And I'd add that um, I watched uh, two select board meetings in Montreal, and this was discussed. And this was the emotional flashpoint site location there for them. So uh, Hopkinton is also in transition in a variety of ways here. So that might be a difficult <laughs> one to uh, nail down as far as what they plan to do. But it might be worth reinforcing, communicating to them that, that they are part aware this, that uh, the, pro, the, the path has changed somewhat, and uh, so it might be. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think they have some key positions they need to look at first sure. before yeah. they they start to embark down this road. But they're not uh, going to decide soon. But at least making sure mm -hmm. the select board's aware. Yeah. I think the, this kind of change in direction. It, it's, it's, it remains a race to scale. Yeah, I, I did watch the West Coast Select Board meeting, and I was pretty surprised at the speed with which they made that decision. So clearly, there have been behind the scenes conversations, not heavily debated. Sometimes it just all comes together. You have to salvage it. Right. And I'm not going to comment too, just, too much just because I don't want this to become too much of a deliberation about whether we do yeah. this or not. But I think it's very, the information is obviously very relevant. That's the thing. Um, okay. On the consent agenda, Sam looks like you're going to hold that. Hey, yeah. Any other holds? No. Okay. I move that we approve consent agenda items B, C, D, E, and F. Second. Uh, Cook? Aye. Bennington, aye. Stivers, aye. Henry, aye. Hamilton, aye. Okay. And Sam? And on. Um, I uh, got a couple of uh, small ones on January 16th. And on line 134, 
would be unfunded pension liabilities. And line 204, Sarah Castle, Sarah needs an agent. That's all I got at the 16th. Any other edits from anyone? I move the board through the January 16, 2024, open session meeting. Open <clears throat> session meeting minutes have been ended. Second. Okay. Aye. Hamilton 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 Aye. Start with line 15. I would say community paradigm recommends choose play with the community. Line 16, but the clearly use means it has to possibly be. Line 18, I'd say retiring as fire chief from the town of Foxborough. Line 20, I would uh, make it two sentences, I'd say a strong period. He hopes to make a smooth transition and he looks forward to working with the community. Yeah. That's just very curious in here. <laughs> I'll have you send you this. Thank you. That'd be great. Line uh, 23, I'd uh, make two cents on that. It's like his retirement period is having the endorsement. You do well. In line 25, uh, transitioning from the public safety dispatch function to a regional body. In line 45, the next meetings, uh, surprise January 30th meeting is not on that list of next meetings. So we we didn't know it at chosen that time. That I don't know that we, I don't know that that had been selected at right. that point. Anyway, maybe not a big deal. Line 49, Kathleen Battles. And I have one on 24. I don't think you would listen to yours. Um, after the call, after Alan asking, call, I think it should be which means a lot. To him. Any others? I move that the board approve the open session meeting minutes for January 23rd, 2024, as amended. Second. Oh. Aye. Thanks, tonight. Aye. 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 Um, last item on open session agenda is uh, public comment. Um, is there anyone who wishes to offer public comment? Oh, okay. So, um, so next, I move that the board enter into an executive session for Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21, and not return to open session to consider the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of National Grid Parcel 5440 as the chair is determined that open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the town's position. Second. This has to be a roll call vote. Cook. Aye. Thanks, and I'm sorry, Ryan. Yeah, Hamilton. All right. Turned off the okay. Thanks, have a good night. Very interesting. <laughs> the, the minutes were part of the Oh, everything. We're, well, the whole, we're much more entertaining than Netflix. So. How many times? Yeah. Right. We love to play them a crowd. And we're free. <laughs> Just wish we could limit the number of series. <laughs> Episode 99. Yeah, I know. I still think we should dress in colonial. We could lose all that overtime. That's right. It's triple, triple rate. Yeah, there you go. Oh, Vanessa, you're well